Welcome to our guide on how to set up your brand new Trezor Model 1. In this video, we're gonna talk through the setup process to transform your new Bitcoin key into a live device that can either be used on its own in what's called single signature or as a part of your new unchained multi-sig vault. Let's get started. To start, after you take your device out of the packaging, your very first step is gonna to be to download a software program called the Trezor Suite. This Trezor Suite program helps act as a liaison between your device and your computer, making sure you can get it all set up appropriately. To download the Trezor Suite, please navigate in your internet browser over to trezor.io forward slash start. On this webpage, you're gonna notice that there's a big green button that says download for desktop. This button will allow you to download the Trezor Suite program for your given computer type. Now in this video, I'm on a MacBook. So for me, it would download the type of Trezor Suite that's compatible with my Mac. And that would show right after I'd press the download button. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the Trezor Suite now. All right, when you first open up the Trezor Suite, it's gonna be prompting you to connect your Trezor device. So at this point, I have my device out of the packaging. I'm gonna go ahead and use the USB cable that came with the device to plug it into my computer. Now this step is important. You do wanna make sure that you can successfully plug your device into your computer. A lot of different computers have different ports and adapters, so you do wanna make sure that you can use a USB port on your computer to plug in your Trezor device. When you plug in your Trezor, the software program Trezor Suite is going to tell you that your device has been detected and you're going to notice it on the screen. Let's check it out here. The screen of my Trezor is going to light up and you're going to notice in your Trezor Suite, the first thing you see is a security check. Now this security check is going to make sure that you know your device wasn't tampered with. Uh, before your device got to you. So you can go ahead and select Set Up Trezor. And right away we are prompted with the firmware installation screen. Now at Unchained, we do recommend downloading the Bitcoin only firmware. The Bitcoin only firmware is really nice for you as a Bitcoin holder to know that an update to another cryptocurrency is not gonna impact the safety and security of your Bitcoin key. To download the Bitcoin-only firmware, you can select Bitcoin-only firmware that's underlined in the text above Install Firmware. I'm going to go ahead and select Bitcoin-only firmware, and then the green button on the right-hand side for Install Bitcoin-only. We're going to wait for the software to install onto the device. At this point on your Trezor device, you're going to be noticing some gears turning. It's going to be installing the latest version of the Bitcoin-only firmware and we can give it just a few more moments here. In some cases with your Trezor Model 1 device, it is going to have you disconnect and reconnect the device just to prove that there's a human being in the background there. So I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect my device by unplugging it from the cable and then plugging it right back in. And I'm gonna notice my device itself is going to start to uh, restart with this new firmware installed. You're gonna see another progress bar on your computer, and we'll just give it a few more moments here to boot up. The gears are gonna be turning on your device again, and we'll wait for it to get to the 100% mark where we can continue on to set up our brand new Bitcoin key. All right. After the firmware installation is complete, in the Trezor Suite, you are going to see a green button down on bottom underneath the progress bar that says continue. We're gonna see that here. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and select continue to move on in the process. The next step is gonna be the screen that says create a new wallet or restore one from a backup. Now this is really important. The left-hand option is what we're gonna do today, create a new wallet. But in the future, if you ever needed to recover your Bitcoin key, this is why seed phrases are so important, you would choose that recover option. You could enter your 24 word seed phrase onto your device to completely recover your Bitcoin key. That's the magic of Bitcoin seed phrases. But what we're gonna do in this video is select the leftmost option for create new wallet. So I can go ahead and select that there. After selecting create new wallet, 
I'm going to select Standard Seed Backup in the middle of the screen. Once I do that, my device itself is going to be asking me if it's OK to move forward and conduct a standard seed phrase backup. On the screen of my device, it is going to be saying, do you really want to create a new wallet? And I'm going to press the rightmost button for confirm. Now in the Trezor suite, I have this big green button that says create backup. I can go ahead and select create backup. And on this page, we're about to get our 24 seed phrase words, but Trezor does like to stress the importance of your seed phrase words, as anyone should. Now, this Create Backup page has some checkboxes. Really, you can think about them as best practices and things to know about your seed phrase words. Going from left to right, we have your seed backup lets you recover your funds in case of Trezor loss or damage, kind of what I was talking about earlier with that Recover Wallet option. The middle box says never take a picture or make a digital copy of your backup. This is incredibly, incredibly important. While it's convenient to snap a photo of your seed phrase words instead of writing them down, any time your seed phrase words are exposed digitally, that's an opportunity for somebody to steal your Bitcoin key. We want to avoid that at all costs. On the right-hand side, you see store your seed backup securely and never share it with anyone. Kind of goes hand in hand with that previous middle box. You never want to let your seed phrase words uh, get in the possession of someone else. I'm going to denote that I understand all of these boxes and their messaging by clicking on each one of them. And as I do that, the Begin Backup button down on bottom is going to turn green. I'm going to go ahead and select Begin Backup. Now at this point, on my Trezor device, I'm going to start to see my new seed phrase words, starting with my very first word. I'm going to start to write down these words in order, 1 through 24, in the little seed phrase recovery booklet that came with my device. In your brand new Trezor Model 1 package, you are going to receive two of these backup cards. They give you one as an extra, just in case, you know, maybe you have a typo and you're writing it down the first time and you need a new, a new booklet to use. When you're doing this for the first time, just use one booklet. Recording the 24 words in order, 1 through 24, one time, is going to be the way to go. I'm going to start to write down these words now for myself, for my new Bitcoin key. Once you get to your 24th word, you're going to notice that there's an option on the Trezor screen that says, again. This is really important. It gives you the opportunity to go through your entire list of 24 seed phrase words one more time. You want to check for any inaccuracies, make sure you got everything down correctly, so you can go ahead and examine all of your seed phrase words one more time. After confirming all of my words one more time, I now see that I have a backup successful message in my Trezor suite, and I'm now prompted to move on to setting my PIN. So right here, we can take a quick pause. Those 24 words are the most important thing you can do for your Bitcoin key. Getting those down, having them physically secure, again, is extremely important. But now, we can also add some additional physical security to the device. What we can do is set a unique PIN that can be set for the device that's needed to unlock the device in the future. Every time you go to plug in your Trezor, you need to enter this special pin in order to work the device. Similar to like how you might have a pin on your cell phone or something like that, really a similar concept. The pin, though, is different from the seed phrase words. So the pin, while I recommend writing it down with your seed phrase words so you have it recorded, it's OK if you forget your pin, uh, because that's why the 24 words are there. You can completely restore your Bitcoin key even if you do forget your PIN. So in the Trezor Suite interface, I'm going to select Continue to PIN in green. And then I get this message from Trezor, use a strong PIN. Of course, we're going to go through that process in just a moment. So I can select Set PIN. Now on the screen of my Trezor device, it's going to say, do you really want to set a new PIN? I'm going to press the rightmost button for Confirm. And now, on the screen of my Trezor suite, I'm going to see a little matrix that's some dots, a three by three grid of some dots. And to set my pin on my device, I'm going to click on these dots. Now, where's my number pad? Well, that's actually the really cool thing about these Trezor Model 1s. Your number pad is going to be showing to you on the screen of your Trezor device. You're going to see a grid of three by three grid of numbers. There's no zero, so it's just digits one through nine. They're going to be all scrambled up. And the way you select a pin 
for a Trezor Model 1 device is you click on the number that's positioned on the Trezor screen, uh, you click on the dot that corresponds to where the number is positioned. I know it's a little funky the first time through, but it gets easier the more you do it. So for example, if I wanted to do a pin of one, two, three, four, I don't recommend doing this at home, but it's gonna be easier here for me to show you this example. I can go ahead and select Enter Pin. And this time, you're gonna notice that your Trezor device scrambles up those numbers. We're gonna enter the pin one more time just to protect against any typos that you might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this iteration for one, two, three, and four. And go ahead and select Enter Pin down below to confirm this pin. Now, before I do that, I just wanna note, I've used a four-digit pin here. Now you can see on the left-hand side, Trezor does say you can enter up to 50 digits. Uh, my advice would be don't do 50 digits. That becomes really unwieldy and hard to keep track of. I usually recommend a pin of about four to six total digits just to make it easy. And again, once you do have a desired pin, please write it down alongside your seed words. You can go ahead and select enter pin and we're gonna get a successful match if those pins matched up. In the upper right, we see pin change successfully, so we know that we're all good. I'm gonna take a moment here to write down my pin. All right. Now in the Trezor Suite interface, I am gonna move forward by selecting Continue. On this page, we see a bunch of different cryptocurrencies here. Bitcoin is already active. We installed the Bitcoin only firmware. We don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. We can select complete setup down below. Awesome. At this point, your brand new Trezor Model 1 is complete. You've set up your new Bitcoin key. There's just a few remaining housekeeping items that we'd like to talk about. Number one, you can name your device. So every time you go to plug in your Trezor, you're gonna see the name of it appear across the screen. By default, it's named My Trezor, but you can give it any name you'd like. In multi-sig, where you're using multiple Bitcoin keys, you might find it helpful to name the device something that uh, can help you distinguish the device from something else. So maybe if you have a black Trezor and a white Trezor, you can name them black and white. Uh, maybe if you have a cold card and a Trezor, you can name one Alpha and one Bravo, whatever makes sense for you. This Trezor is black, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter black into my name box here. And once I've entered the name, I can go ahead and select edit name on the right hand side. It is gonna have me confirm this name on the screen of my Trezor. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I spelled it correctly and press confirm. Awesome, and now I've successfully changed the name of my device and I can continue on to access the Trezor suite. Now right away, I'm prompted with this pop-up box that says select wallet type, standard wallet or hidden wallet. We always recommend sticking with a standard wallet if you're using multi-sig. We don't need to get fancy with a hidden wallet because multi-sig is already helping us eliminate all single points of failure. We don't need to inject another single point of failure by setting a unique passphrase. If you do want to learn more about passphrases, I su uh, suggest you go do some of your own research and, and see if a passphrase might make sense for you if you're using one device and what's called single sig to secure your Bitcoin. But again, that is another single point of failure. And if you're using multi-sig, you don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and select standard wallet. And perfect. I'm all set to go with my brand new Trezor. And word to the wise, if you do want to avoid that pop-up in the future, the standard wallet, hidden wallet pop-up. It's really nice to go to the upper right-hand side of the screen to the little settings box. Looks like a gear, kind of. You can select settings and then device in the middle of the screen. This is also where you can go to check your backup words and maybe we'll save that for another video. You can also reset your pin on this device settings screen. But what I recommend users do is scroll all the way down to where it says passphrase, which is that hidden wallet. Just press the little toggle on the right-hand side to turn off the passphrase ability. On the screen of your Trezor device, it's gonna say, do you really wanna disable passphrase protection? You can go ahead and press confirm. 
That way that pop-up won't appear to you every time you go to plug in your Trezor device. Let me go ahead and click on dashboard and perfect. You are all good to go with your brand new Trezor. If you're using this in multi-sig alongside another new Trezor, you can follow the same exact procedure. A different set of seed phrase words will be recorded, but you can use the same pin if you'd like just to have one less thing to manage and keep track of. We do always recommend that you think critically about securing your devices. And if you have two hardware wallets, two Bitcoin keys, you might want to store them separately from one another. So using the same pin is certainly okay if you're deploying that practice. And perfect. At this point, you have your new Bitcoin key all set up and ready to go. If you're doing another hardware wallet setup just like this for multi-sig, you can follow the same exact process, getting a new set of seed phrase words. You can even set the same pin if you'd like, just to have one less thing to manage and keep track of. If you do set the same pin, you want to think extra critically about separating your devices and securing them separate from one another. It's generally our guidance when it comes to your multi-sig Bitcoin keys. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to check out more content from Unchained at our blog at blog.unchained.com or our YouTube channel. We'd love to see you over there. Thank you.